So after we've dressed our kids up, made a shoebox scene, or decorated our potatoes to look like book characters, what's left of World Book Day? We hopefully have shown our children how fun books can be. Hopefully we've inspired them to pick up and enjoy books in their spare time. Hopefully we are making them better readers and writers too. But how do we extend that enthusiasm beyond one day, beyond a week, and into our everyday lives? That's what I'll explain in this video, so if that sounds like something you would enjoy, please take the time to hit that subscribe button and see more of this type of content in the future. Now let's get started. So after we've dressed our kids up, first I would suggest you create a book nook for your child. It's a wonderful inviting space to inspire a love of books in your child, and it's easy to make and fun to personalise too. So how exactly do you do it? Well here are the five simple steps for including key items in your book nook, like we do. Number one, make your bookstore accessible. This can be a traditional bookshelf, a wall mounted shelf, or even a simple box. The important thing is for it to be at a height where the child can help themselves to books whenever they like, whatever their age. It is important that they see books as equally accessible to them as toys. They need to play at reading if they can't yet. They need to manipulate pages and flaps and learn how to put books away after they've been read. If you're worried your child is not yet careful enough with books or very young, why not try board books or fabric books in your book nook? Or collect some cheap books from second-hand shops and save the best ones for times when you read together. Number two, you'll need a comfy seat in your book nook. Somewhere for you and your child to sit next to your bookstore. It should be comfy for both of you, so that you're not interrupted by a dead leg in the middle of a story with your child sat on you. The older a child becomes, the less need there is for you to join them in their book nook. They may value the solitude of a quietness of reading, but still be able to join them if they wish, because sharing books is very valuable and something even us as adults can enjoy. That seat could be a chair, a window seat, a bean bag, or simply a big pile of fluffy cushions. Number three, good lighting. Reading in poor light can cause eyes to strain, and very bright lights can feel a bit harsh and intimidating. So finding a good light source is important for your book nook. Natural light is a joy, and can lighten our mood and make us smile. Such a wonderful feeling is exactly what we want to associate with reading. So why not set up your book nook by a window? Or even on a warm day, you could take your books outside and enjoy reading, setting up a book nook in the garden. Number four is cosy extras. Continue thinking of that idea of coziness. Add blankets, extra cushions, cuddly toys, Children could also help to personalise their book nook with many of these items. Number five, keep it fresh. You can change it up and keep the book nook interesting for your child. We like to rotate the books which are in our book nook and add seasonal books on rotation. You could maybe add different weights of blankets for different seasons or different cuddly toys, maybe ones related to the book that you've got in your book nook at that time. Adding an audio book can add another element as well. We love listening to stories on our Tony box. Once you have your book nook, use it. Involve everyone. As many people as possible should be involved in reading with your child. We want to show children that reading is for everyone and it's something to be enjoyed by all. So if family members come to visit, ask them to cosy up with your child in their book nook and enjoy reading a story with them. As children get older, they can read to their siblings. Older children can help teach younger children or help them to read a book that they would otherwise find too hard. Make it part of your daily routine. Make it a routine, for example, to share a book at bedtime. After all, a bed can be the ultimate cosy book nook. And or maybe read to your child instead of sticking on the TV when they wake you up at six o'clock in the morning. I know that can be an ask, especially if they wake up even earlier than that six o'clock. 
but it does make a calming start to the day. Or even just cosy up in the afternoon for a quick read. Whatever works for you, but if you can guarantee at least one book a day, that's 365 books in one year. Once they're in the habit of requesting books, you can feel as if it's that many in one day, let alone one year. But is it worth it? Well, yes. That first time that you see them choose to sit in their book nook with a book alone, unprompted. That moment that you see your child cuddle up and read with their sibling. That moment when they say something and you wonder to yourself, now what book is that from? The day your child writes their first story. The day your child acts out a book with their toys. All these moments are inspired by the love that we can generate from books from an early age. So make a book nook as cosy as possible with your kids today and enjoy a good story or two or more. And of course, books can offer much more than a good story. There are so many different types of books which offer different opportunities for your child. It's a good idea to incorporate a range of these into your book collection to encourage your kids with books in a variety of different ways. As I said, all children need to learn how to handle books and have equal access to them as they do their toys from an early age. There are many books that are designed to really help with this. When my children were very young, I allowed them free access to robust board books that we'd bought second-hand in case of accident, as well as a large range of fabric books. These, along with Lift the Flap style books, encourage children to learn the skills of turning pages while being careful with books, as well as limiting the damage, which is great from our point of view. At this time, we also kept a separate selection of books, especially for reading with the child, which required more gentle handling. Many books for young children are based on repetition or songs. Encourage the child to join in, stopping just before the end of the line, seeing if they can finish it on their own. Many books for young children are based on repetition or songs. Encourage the child to join in, stopping just before the end of the line, seeing if they can finish it on their own. Before long, they'll be doing the whole song. Some books have other ways of getting children to join in. There are books with sound buttons to be pressed at appropriate times in the story. Books with pictures in the text for the child to say. These can be very helpful for showing the child how you read a book. You can point to each word as you read it, and then point to the picture and pause. Can the child press the correct button or say the correct word to fill the space. Helping the child to follow the text teaches them that English is read from left to right and then top to bottom. It shows them that each collection of letters is a word and is separated from the next by a space. These may sound like very small things, but they're fundamental to reading and later writing too. We've also picked up a couple of books which invite children to use their fingers to follow trails in the books which are raised up from the rest of the page. These are a great way to practice some pre-writing skills. The control needed to follow the trail is similar to that that is needed to move a pencil to form a letter. We've also picked up a couple of books which invite children to use their fingers to follow trails in there are other books that have magnets, stickers or felt pieces that can be added to the pages. These are great for the beginnings of reading comprehension. We have a range of these and I'll read carefully to the child a sentence at a time and then ask them to select the corresponding felt piece or magnet and place it on the page in the correct place, just like the sentence suggests. Even when the child is not reading for themselves, it is important that they understand the book and take in the details in the writing. Listening and responding appropriately with these sorts of books really help to promote these skills. Most also have a free play page at the end for the child to make their own scene. There are also counting books which are very helpful as a foundation for maths learning. They're often beautifully illustrated too. We have a range that help with counting up and down, 
so you can introduce the concept of adding one more or taking one away. Even for very young children, there are also non-fiction books. Of, even for very young children, there are also non-fiction books available. These can be simple labelled pictures or include more detail, but are always a great starting point for discussions with your child. If you're going to a farm, look at a farm book before you go. Talk about what you will see. If you've just visited the dinosaur museum, look at a book and see what you can remember from your trip. Reading books and talking about them with children can be a wonderful way to engage in learning in a way that feels cosy, shared, relaxed and fun. So don't just grab a storybook on your next trip to the library or the bookshop. Have a closer look and see what else books can offer you and your child. And finally, remember, play related to books, tough tray setups, crafts, dressing up. These things are great and don't have to be limited to book day. They can help to extend play opportunities throughout the year. So slot them in as often as you like. Whenever your child is showing an interest in a particular book, harness it. Enjoy books and reading in all forms as regularly as possible. And watch your child build confidence with language, storytelling, reading and writing while inspiring their imaginations and having fun. Books really are magical. <laughs>